نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم I send my love and my salams to you uh, the Muslim community of Singapore I uh, first visited you in 19, 1988 that's right as long ago as 1988 I was invited uh, to attend a conference here in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia um, on the Hajj and because my teacher of blessed memory Maulana Fadl Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah had such close ties with Singapore he lived in Singapore for one year of his life and because his teacher Maulana Abdul Alim Siddiqui Rahimahullah visited Sing Singapore countless times in fact there was a masjid built uh, in Singapore named Masjid Abdul Alim Siddiqui Rahimahullah uh, and because I was a student from, from of Maulana Ansari there was this great longing in my heart to visit Singapore and I got an invitation after the conference was over to to come to Singapore I went and I spent a week with you at that time I remember it was the Eid al-Adha <laughs> uh, time in Singapore and I met the grandsons of those who had worked with Maulana Abdul Rahim Siddiqui uh, many of them have now passed away to Allah's mercy but I loved I loved Singapore and I loved the Muslim community of Singapore and they were so loving to me and friendly to me uh, since 1988 I was visiting Singapore nearly every year from New York where I was based and um, by Allah's kindness and Allah's grace um, I <laughs> I had become one of the most popular speakers on Islam in Singapore um, and whenever I lectured there used to be capacity audiences listening in um, and then came 9-11 and after 9-11 when I visited Singapore there was no hall that we could choose for a lecture that would be big enough because the number of people who were coming to listen to me was so large that there were people outside who wait, waited and could not get in the halls. That was the hunger in Singapore for knowledge. The scholars of Islam in Singapore told me, I can't mention their names of course, but the scholars of Islam in Singapore said to me, Imran, you are not Singaporean so you speak we don't have the freedom to speak <laughs> they told me that they said we don't have the freedom to speak so you must speak and say what we cannot say and I took their advice and I spoke and I said what they could not say because they didn't have the freedom the government of Singapore responded after 9-11 by putting a clamp on me they, they would not issue a permit for me to speak in the glorious democracy of Singapore one man's voice was too powerful for them so if you don't have a permit to speak you're not allowed to speak that's it but they didn't stop me from entering the country so from 2002 until 2007 I returned to Singapore two or three times but not allowed to speak but in 2007 they decided I'm too dangerous to be even physically in the country <laughs> so they banned my entry into Singapore in 2007 why what did I do I was preaching the same thing for 20 years it never caused any acts of terrorism in Singapore it didn't bring down the government not at all 
I was not saying anything new. It is just that 9-11 had created a new situation in the world and they were terrified. That's why they stopped me. All I can say is shame on you, Singapore. Because no other country in the world has ever prohibited my entry into the country. And no other country in the world, no government in the world has ever prohibited me, prohibited me from giving speeches, lectures, none. Only one country in the world, only one, Singapore, prohibits me from speaking and prohibits me from entering the country. It is precisely because the Muslims of Singapore are starved for free expression of views. Everything is controlled that they have been asking me to speak now that we have the internet and we can bypass frontiers and, and, and offer some advice to the Muslim community of Singapore. Non-inflammatory advice, so the government which is going to be listening to the talk need not be worried. <laughs> no, there was no need to ban my entry into Singapore at all. You made a very big mistake. The Muslims of Singapore are not stupid. They are not foolish. They recognize that there is merit in my views, that we are now located at a moment in time when momentous change is about to sweep the world. They recognize that I am correct. Change in the monetary system, that the US dollar is going to collapse, is going to bring down all the paper money in the world. There's going to be a new regime of only electronic money. And electronic money controlled by those who control the banking system is the equivalent of a financial Guantanamo. If you step out of line, you will lose your bank account. That's it. You have no more money. Pinch. So it's financial slavery. Either you tow the line or you have no money. You can't take your money out of the bank, you know. Huh? What are you, what are you, what are you going to take out of the bank? The money is invisible. The money is intangible. You can't see the money. You can't touch the money. Tomorrow, how are you going to take your money out of the bank, you dumb dumb? No, you can't. The money is stuck in the bank. <laughs> All that you can do is to transfer the money from one account to another. That's all. So the, your money, your money is hostage there. And any time they, they consider you to be someone who has stepped out of line, as someone of a threat to them, someone who is sincerely and truthfully a Muslim, and who stands up for what is right and just, regardless of consequences and who stands up for against what is wrong and unjust regardless of consequence they're going to come after you and you lose your bank account but what is it to be a Muslim your scholars in Singapore know it but they can't tell you because you know you know why but I can tell you Allah's command in the Qur'an when he created this ummah of people who follow Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is that you are a people who engage in amar bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar amar bil ma'roof means standing up for what is right and just and nahi anil munkar means standing up against what is wrong and unjust and evil. If you abscond from that, if you take a rain check on that, you betray the religion and you pay a price for it. Can you stand up in Singapore for what is right? Can you stand up in Singapore against what is wrong? 
can you say in Singapore that this paper money is bogus and fraudulent and I'm, I'm saying this in Malaysia for, year, for years now. No one has taken any action against me in Singapore and Malaysia. I've been visiting Malaysia for 22 years now. And for 22 years, the government of this country has never placed any bar on me from speaking. So you can't do that in Singapore. Well, then what do you do? It's not just the monetary predicament, it's more than that. Muslims in Singapore are not stupid. They know that I am correct when I say that Israel is about to launch great wars. And when Israel launches those great wars, it will be for the purpose of replacing the United States of America as the next ruling state in the world. Muslims in Singapore have read my book, Jerusalem in the Quran. Oh yes. When I lectured and I launched the book, Jerusalem in the Quran in Singapore in 2002, there was a, there was a mammoth crowd. All the copies that we had were all sold out that night. That was a thirst for knowledge in Singapore. What are the implications for the Singaporean Muslims when Israel launches her big wars in the near future? Would it be an attack on Iran or on Pakistan or on Syria or on Egypt? Any one of these four. What we do know is that it's not going to be one isolated attack for one day or two days but rather it's going to be a series of wars, a series of wars. And those who have been studied il studying Ilmu Akhirul Zaman or Islamic eschatology, as I have been for, I don't know, 15, 20 years now or more, we know that this series of wars is going to culminate with the Malhama, of which the Prophet ﷺ spoke. The great war, the Malhama, the Christians call it Armageddon. But the Prophet ﷺ call it the Malhama, which is going to make the First World War and the Second World War look like a fight over peanuts. Well, let me tell you, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters in Singapore, for whom I have so much love. I have so many students in Singapore, so many students in Singapore. Let me tell you that once Israel comes out from behind the curtains and starts these great wars against Muslims, the first implication is there's going to be tremendous anger in the Muslim community of Southeast Asia. That anger is going to explode and no government in this region will be able to control it. No, sir. No, sir. No government will be able to control it. That anger will be so great that it will be perilous for Singapore because the government of Singapore, I think they now recognize that they were foolish in becoming so close to Israel that they took, they got the name of Little Israel. It was foolish. If you've forgotten geography, has the government of Singapore forgotten geography? Look at where Singapore is located. Look at the size of Singapore. Look all around Singapore and you see a sea of Islam. How are you going to survive when there is tremendous anger all around the little island? You can't buy that. No amount of bribery, no amount of pulling the coattails of governments are going to help you at that time because no government will be able to control it. Forget it. Yes, it's going to be perilous for Singapore. The Singaporeans, for example, who travel in the region would have a security problem. 
I don't need to speak more than that. Just enough. Those are enough words for you. You have a security problem. How should the Muslim community of Singapore respond? My my answer to you is Alam takun Abdullahi wasiyah for to hajiru fiha Is Allah's earth not wide? Is Allah's earth not wide that you can make hijrah? There are Muslims in Singapore who are happy to be there. They consider Singapore to be Jannah. Leave them. Leave them where they are. Whoever they may be, leave them where they are. If that's where you are happy, then that's where you stay. But not all are fools. Not all Muslims betray Allah and His Messenger. Particularly the young ones who have a restlessness in their heart that they want to see the triumph of truth over falsehood and the triumph of justice over injustice and oppression the young ones who have knowledge and they want to be good Muslims these are not going to say we are comfortable we are going to stay where we are, no so my advice to you is make dua to Allah and ask Him Oh Allah, kindly make it easy for me. Kindly make it easy for me to make hijrah. If Allah accepts your dua and you can make hijrah, then leave. Don't leave while stamping your foot in arrogance. Leave the way they left Makkah. They left Makkah quietly. They left Makkah gently. They left Makkah in small groups. They left Makkah at night time so as not to create any public profile that would be intimidating. That's how they made Hijra. That's how you should make Hijra. And when you make Hijra out of Singapore, don't go to cities around you to live. No, that's the worst place to be. Go and find residence in the remote countryside and live in small communities. The Malay call it Kampung, a village. Build small villages. Mashallah, 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 Singapore, you are a beautiful Muslim community. You are a vibrant Muslim community. Not all of you are people who betray Allah and His Messenger. Not all of you are prepared to live in a prison where you don't have the freedom to speak and to stand up. So get out while you can. Indonesia is a lovely place to go. Malaysia is a very nice place to go. Brunei, any other part of the country. And if you knock and Allah wants to open the door for you, then Allah can open the door for you. When you make Hijra. Concentrate. This is a, your, your brother Imran Hussein. You have asked me for advice and I'm giving you the advice. When you make Hijra, do not put all your effort on building your business for material prosperity. No. When you make Hijra, put your first foot forward in producing your own food, your own milk, your own meat, and feed your babies, feed your children with proper food, not with the garbage that comes from the supermarkets. That food is being corrupted. There is facade in the world. One of the forms of facade is agricultural facade. There is the other one, the sexual facade with homosexuality all around us, lesbianism all around us. You go into a shopping mall and the women are more naked than they're covered. Hmm? All of these are forms of facade, but we're concerned with agricultural facade. So take your children out and go to Kampong and produce your own food, not genetically modified food. No, not food produced with chemical fertilizers, no, 
produce good food, healthy food, and feed your children with healthy food. Live as a community, a united community. Stay away from sectarianism, that I belong to this sect, I'm the Brelvi, and I'm the Deobandi, and I'm the this, and I'm the that, and I'm the Salafi. Mawlana Fadlur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, my teacher used to say, I am not Deobandi, I'm not Brelvi, I'm not Ahli Hadith, I'm not Wahhabi, I'm Muslim. Those were his words. You like it, alhamdulillah, you don't like it, that's your problem. Those were his words. Identify yourself as a Muslim and come together and live as one united community. How can you be united? Only the Quran and the Prophet can unite us, nothing else. So your community must be built on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Mawlana Ansari wrote the Quranic foundations and structure of Muslim society in which he classified the guidance coming out of the Qur'an. That is the book, that's the manual that you need. If you want to establish Islam in your kampung, in the remote countryside, follow that book. it will tell you how to establish Islam in the countryside. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may open a way from you, for you, the Muslim community of Singapore. Those of you who recognize the danger that is just around the corner and who have had the good sense to call upon me and ask me to prof offer advice. Don't sit there in Singapore waiting for it to happen. When a Singaporean traveling outside of Singapore, anywhere in this region, his life will be in danger. His life will be in danger. Don't wait for that to happen. Get out now before it is too late. Make the niyat for hijrah. And may Allah open a way for you, my dear brothers and sisters in Singapore, for whom I have so much love and memories, such beautiful memories over the years of the many times I visited Singapore and enjoyed your Chinese halal food. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.